The Martin Marietta X-24 was an American experimental aircraft developed from a joint United States Air Force NASA program named Pilot. It was designed and built to test lifting body concepts, experimenting with the concept of unpowered re-entry and landing, later used by the space shuttle. A lifting body is a fixed-wing aircraft or spacecraft configuration in which the body itself produces lift. In contrast to a flying wing, which is a wing with minimal or no conventional fuselage, a lifting body can be thought of as a fuselage with little or no conventional wing. Whereas a flying wing seeks to maximize cruise efficiency at subsonic speeds by eliminating non-lifting surfaces, lifting bodies generally minimize the drag and structure of a wing for subsonic, supersonic and hypersonic flight, or spacecraft re-entry. The US built a number of lifting body rocket planes to test the concept, as well as several rocket-launched re-entry vehicles that were tested over the Pacific. The Dream Chaser Lifting Body Spaceplane, an extension of HL-20 technology, was proposed as one of three vehicles to potentially carry U.S. crew to and from the International Space Station, but eventually was selected as a resupply vehicle instead. In 2015 the ESA Intermediate Experimental Vehicle performed the first ever successful re-entry of a lifting body spacecraft. The lifting body was conceived as long ago as 1917, when something like a delta wing plan form with a thick included fuselage was described in a patent by Roy Scroggs. At low airspeeds the lifting body is inefficient and did not enter mainstream airplane design. Aerospace-related lifting body research arose from the idea of spacecraft re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and landing much like a regular aircraft. NASA's refinements of the lifting body concept began in 1962 with R. Dale Reed of NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center. Airflow separation caused the crash of the Northrop M2F2 lifting body. The IXV is a European Space Agency lifting body experimental re-entry vehicle intended to validate European reusable launchers which could be evaluated in the frame of the FLPP program. Although a lifting body configuration would not have been vulnerable to the wing leading edge failure that caused the second shuttle loss, such a configuration could not meet the flight envelope requirements of both NASA and the military. The lifting body concept has been implemented in a number of other aerospace programs, the previously mentioned NASA X-38, Lockheed Martin the 1033, BAC's multi-unit space transport and recovery device, Europe's EADS Phoenix, and the joint Russian-European Clipper spacecraft. Of the three basic design shapes usually analyzed for such programs the lifting body may offer the best trade-off in terms of maneuverability and thermodynamics while meeting its customers' mission requirements. Another use of a lifting body is SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket's first stage. During landing attempts, the first stage deploys grid fins which steer lift produced by the cylindrical body of the first stage. The U.S. government developed a variety of proof-of-concept and flight test vehicle lifting body designs from the early 1960s through the mid-1970s at Armstrong Flight Research Center. Jerry Anderson's 1969 doppelganger used a VTOL lifting body lander, a sender to visit an Earth-like planet, only to crash in both attempts. His series UFO featured a lifting body craft visually similar to the M2F2 for orbital operations. The 1970s television program The Six Million Dollar Man used footage of a lifting body aircraft, culled from actual NASA exercises, in the show's title sequence. Originally built as the X-24A, the aircraft was later rebuilt as the X-24B. The X-24 was dropped from a modified B-52 Stratofortress at high altitudes before igniting its rocket engine, after expending its rocket fuel, the pilot would glide the X-24 to an unpowered landing. The X-24 was one of a group of lifting bodies flown by the NASA Flight Research Center in a joint program with the U.S. Air Force at Edwards Air Force Base in California from 1963 to 1975. The lifting bodies were used to demonstrate the ability of pilots to maneuver and safely land wingless vehicles designed to fly back to Earth from space and be landed like an airplane at a predetermined site. Lifting Bodies Aerodynamic Lift essential to flight in the atmosphere, was obtained from their shape. The addition of fins and control surfaces allowed the pilots to stabilize and control the vehicles and regulate their flight paths. The X-24 was built by Martin Marietta and flown from Edwards AFB, California. The X-24A was the fourth lifting body design to fly. It followed the NASA M2F1 in 1964, the Northrop HL-10 in, the Northrop M2F2 in 1966 and preceded the Northrop M2F3. The X-24A was a fat, short teardrop shape with vertical fins for control. It made its first, unpowered, glide flight on April 17, 1969 with Air Force Major Gerald R. Gentry at the controls. 
Gentry also piloted its first powered flight on March 19, 1970. The craft was taken to around 45,000 feet by a modified B-52 and then drop launched, then either glided down or used its rocket engine to ascend to higher altitudes before gliding down. The X-24A was flown 28 times at speeds up to 1,036 miles per hour and altitudes up to 71,400 feet. The X-24B's design evolved from a family of potential re-entry shapes, each with higher lift-to-drag ratios, proposed by the Air Force Flight Dynamics Laboratory. To reduce the costs of constructing a research vehicle, the Air Force returned the X-24A to the Martin Marietta Corporation for modifications that converted its bulbous shape into one resembling a flying flatiron, rounded top, flat bottom, and a double delta planform that ended in a pointed nose. First to fly the X-24B was John Menck, a glide flight on 1 August 1973. He was also the pilot on the first powered mission 15 November 1973. There were a variety of X-24C proposals floated between 1972 and 1978. Perhaps the most notable was a Lockheed Skunk Works design, the L-301, which was to use scramjets to reach a top speed of Mach 8. After learning about a remark by Chuck Yeager that he would like to have some jet-powered lifting bodies for training purposes, Martin designed and built, on their own initiative, two examples of the SV-5J. The SV-5J was a jet-powered version of the rocket-powered X-24A. The SV-5J had identical dimensions to the X-24A, but was powered by a single Pratt & Whitney J60 PW1 jet engine of 1,360 kg force, in place of the X-24A's reaction motors XLR11RM13 rocket engine. Martin also manufactured a full-scale, unflyable, mock-up of the SV-5J. Martin were unable to convince Milt Thompson to fly the SV-5J, even after offering a $20,000 bonus. As the original X-24A was converted to X-24B, one of the SV-5Js eventually was converted to represent the X-24A, for display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Wright-Patterson AFB, Ohio, beside the original X-24B. The unflyable mock-up ended up in Hollywood and was used for several movies as a spaceship prop. The X-24A was flown 28 times in the program that, like the HL-10, validated the concept that a space shuttle vehicle could be landed unpowered. The fastest speed achieved by the X-24A was 1,036 miles per hour. It was powered by an XLR-11 rocket engine with a maximum theoretical vacuum thrust of 8,480 pounds force. The X-24A was modified into the more stable X-24B with an entirely different shape in 1972. The bulbous shape of the X-24A was converted into a flying flatiron shape with a rounded top, flat bottom, and double delta planform that ended in a pointed nose. It was the basis for the Martin SV-5J. The X-24A shape was later borrowed for the X-38 Crew Return Vehicle Technology Demonstrator for the International Space Station. The X-24B demonstrated that accurate unpowered re-entry vehicle landings were operationally feasible. Top speed achieved by the X-24B was 1,164 miles per hour and the highest altitude it reached was 74,130 feet. The pilot on the last powered flight of the X-24B was Bill Dana, who also flew the last X-15 flight about seven years earlier. Among the final flights with the X-24B were two precise landings on the main concrete runway at Edwards. These missions were flown by Mank and Air Force Major Mike Love, and represented the final milestone in a program that helped write the flight plan for the Space Shuttle program. The X-24B was the last aircraft to fly in Dryden's lifting body program. The X-24B is on public display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, Wright-Patterson AFB, Ohio.